Hey friends, Jill here. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. Man, it has been a crazy week as far as just being so off of my routine. I'm used to like shooting videos every day, editing every day, and so I feel so thrown off. I've missed you guys so much. Uh, so I am certainly ready for my laptop uh, to get back from the shop and working and kind of get back in my daily routine of posting. So before we head out into the garden and cut some zinnias, which is uh, what we're gonna be doing this evening, is uh, doing some flower harvesting, I wanted to give you guys an update on Callie and her family. First of all, you all just touched my heart so stinking much. The fact that so many of you guys commented that you were praying, uh, went ahead and just, you know, spoke prayers over her in our comments, that meant so much. I was able to screenshot a lot of those and send those to Callie's parents, just ask some encouragement and let her know that there's a lot of people rallied around um, their little girl in prayer. And so thank you guys so much. An update, Callie's actually doing really, really well. They were able to suction a lot of out of her. They were, she was on her stomach and wasn't able to be turned over on her back. Now she's on her back. And as of yesterday, she opened her eyes for the first time and was able to slightly communicate with like nodding her head and things like that with her mom and dad. So that is a huge praise report. Um, we are so thankful for you guys. Please continue to pray. We know this is going to be a long journey, but at this point, Callie is making improvements, which is something uh, they were not seeing uh, earlier in the week. So thank you guys so, so much. It just, it fills my heart with so much joy knowing that there's people from all around the world standing in agreement for this little girl's healing. And that means so much to me. So Again, thank you guys. I will continue to keep you updated as we continue to know. Uh, but let's head out to the garden and cut some zinnias. I've got my little pitcher here full of water. Um, most of my stuff's packed up and randomly I found this on top of the fridge and I was like, well, I guess it'll work. Now, ideally I would not be cutting flowers right now. It's about five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, some flowers are really kind of particular on if they like to be harvested earlier in the morning, later in the evening. Zinnia is one of those flowers you can do it kind of either time as long as it's just cooler. Um, but I really wanted to harvest some of these because we have um, a little shindig we're going to this weekend and I wanted to be able to harvest some of these flowers. And we have some really heavy uh, rainfall coming in tonight. So the storm clouds are starting to roll in. The percentages are going up from about 5.30 on uh, throughout the night. So I didn't want to chance it. I wanted to go ahead and get out here and cut some of these. I came out here last night with my friend Bailey and she took some photos of the garden, which was so sweet um, because although the garden's not as grand as I would have hoped it would have been, um, I know it's gonna be really sweet to have these memories to look back on. And she got some really pretty pictures of the flowers. So I'm excited uh, to have those and show, share them with you guys. Ooh, I hear the thunder. Alrighty. When I was out here last night though, there were about, I don't know, at least probably 30 plus huge bumblebees all over the flowers, which was really, really encouraging because there was a little bit there where I was like, where are all my pollinators at? Um, and so I was like getting kind of discouraged. I did a lot of this for the pollinators. And so now it is just buzzing. Um, we, we've become one, you guys. I've gotten so much closer to the bees. Not near as scared, not as near as many jumping moves happening. Um, but the zinnias are doing well. They still have those, you know, brown leaves or whatever. We've got Japanese beetles like crazy. That's probably the biggest thing I'm dealing with right now uh, with the flowers is the Japanese beetles. Um, and I honestly haven't done a whole lot of research on how to combat with those. Uh, Sean went out to our new property today. We planted sunflowers a couple weeks ago. He was planting another round. Uh, the same sunflowers we planted a few weeks ago are already getting huge. Uh, so that is really encouraging. We will have a lot of sunflowers soon. And it's really kind of crazy, right? We're in this transition where we're like doing stuff here and we're doing stuff there. Um, the dahlias are coming up in the tunnel. We're gonna be planting some more flowers in the tunnel. So I'm just so, I'm so excited too. And I would encourage you too, maybe if you're in a similar transition season as I am, maybe you know you still wanna grow something this fall. There's plenty of flowers you can actually grow in the fall and they just don't require near as much maintenance. Um, and so I would encourage you, maybe if you're in that season or maybe you're gonna be moving it you know, soon or maybe if you're just busy, honestly, uh, flowers are a really good option 
when you still want to grow something but you just can't be tied down to all the pruning or all the other things that come with growing a lot of food. Hey, you just gonna eat that tomato? <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you hear the thunder? Thunder was rolling. I gave them all a Cali update. Look, oh, let's, yeah. let's move back here. It's so sunny. Yeah, so I gave them a Cali update. I didn't know a whole lot because the whole medical jargon, they put all this long, you know, captured on stuff and I have no idea what that means. But I did tell them that she was able to be flipped over on her back. She opened her eyes, had some communication um, and that things were really good there. Yep, absolutely. That was uh, definitely just a heavy yeah. Facebook message to read, but mm -hmm. there was uh, some positive improvement. So yeah. uh, thank you guys for your prayers. Mm -hmm. We definitely believe in the power of prayer, especially in numbers, and there were so many of you that I know reached out. Um, it really, like stuff like that, is really like when Nathan and I think of community. Like you guys were like, y'all were there, you know. And so we really, we honestly, we do not take that for granted at all because we felt your prayers. We know they felt your prayers, and obviously, like that made a huge difference. So. We really just do value the community that we have here. Yep, absolutely. You want to cut some flowers with me? Sure. <laughs> I came out for a snack. Was that good? Yeah, it was good. That was uh, the Italian, the Italian Roma. It needed a little salt, but it was good. Hmm. I don't really. When I think of like eating a tomato, I don't really think of like grabbing a paste tomato. You know what I mean? Like, I think of grabbing like a big old. Well, I don't think of doing anything. <laughs> Y'all know how I feel about tomatoes. <laughs> Look, I know for a fact there's some cherry tomatoes you can grab. Mm -hmm. I, there's some cherry tomatoes over here. These are really good. I'm gonna take your word for it. Mm -mm. <laughs> All right, before, <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> before we start this adventure, I wanna show you these um, sunflowers. Look at these white marigolds. I was so disappointed in them, and now they're making a comeback. I'm really way prettier than I thought they'd be. Here are all my volunteer uh, zinnias from last year. These were all crosses, and the colors have just been amazing. Look at this color. Isn't that so pretty? So these have just been so delightful. Look at that, just this little sea of zinnia. Where are you going? You're finding random tomatoes? <laughs> Nathan said he is finding random tomatoes that have been picked and just like plopped down on the picnic table. And if I had to guess, <laughs> I'm gonna assume that was our little Junie bee uh, doing that. So I'm gonna pick some zinnias here in a minute with you guys. I'm also gonna pick some of our eucalyptus to do like, you know, kind of make a bouquet. It's really kind of hard to make a bouquet of just zinnias. You need good filler flowers like celosia or, you know, there's a lot of other really good cosmos are a good filler, but I'm not growing any of those. I'm literally only growing the zinnia and the sunflowers and I have a few dahlias, but none of them look good enough to put in a bouquet because of the stinking Japanese beetles. Um, and so, I'm gonna try to cut some of my eucalyptus and throw in there. I'm also gonna try to cut some basil um, because I do have some pretty tall basil plants and some that are going to seed that actually would look really pretty um, and just try to make it a bit fuller. I lost Nathan, I don't know where he went. Oh my goodness, these sunflowers look so pretty. <gasps> and there's so many bees, I love it. Look at those little guys working. Look at that. You go, little guy. We have so many sunflowers blooming. So that is super, I mean, look at them. They're all back there just about to open up. This one's super tall. These are about to open up. I'll probably, I was gonna cut these, but there's so many bees in there, I don't think I'm going to. I may cut that big one because it looks like it's almost done anyways. I want to show you guys this is my favorite part right there for me this is like the promise of tomorrow you know what I mean it's like 
you're so close to opening you're not quite there yet but you know that in just like probably a short day a few hours it will end up looking like that flower right back there and i love that i mean just so many flowers so i don't know a ton about zinnias i have grown them several times but I have been told by several people, because one of the biggest questions I get asked and that I kind of don't know is when do you know that a zinnia is ready to pick? Like obviously you don't want it when it's like super, super in bloom because you want it to last, you know, a longer period of time in a vase, but you don't want to cut it when it's too premature. And I've always been like, when is that sweet spot for zinnias? And I also know that this differs. Uh, with a lot of different varieties and so I've been told that there's a wiggle test which we are actually going to do this test and see um, and I'm going to try to explain it to you guys as I'm also figuring it out myself which I think is kind of the beautiful thing um, about learning is just learning by doing and getting to kind of show you guys how I am also figuring this out and Zinnia is such a easy a flower to grow especially if you're just like you know me and you're a backyard home gardener like yes I am selling some of these but it's not like I'm selling them to like a high-end place or you know what I mean like the customers I'm selling to are okay if they're not completely perfect arrangements um, and so if you're kind of a home gardener or the backyard gardener hobbyist gardener there's a lot of liberty I feel like as far as when you pick them um, I think the biggest thing would be uh, the vase life after you've actually cut the flower. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I think that that's probably the biggest benefit of like picking them at the peak time. All right, so after a quick Google search to make sure that I didn't tell you guys wrong, the wiggle test is, <laughs> it seems like such a funny name. I'm sure there's like an actual proper name that I just don't know. But if you go down about halfway, so here's the stem of the plant. Let's get y'all focused in and you wiggle it like this and the stem seems sturdy and the flowers not going like crazy then apparently it is ready to harvest if you shake it like this and the stem doesn't feel sturdy and the flowers just flopping everywhere then apparently that means that the flower is not ready now although I am no expert at flowers I can just well hey little bee see that was such a good response that bee is literally right behind me. <laughs> so, although I'm not a flower expert by any means, you can also look at a flower too and kind of tell. Now, I think too, the more I grow these varieties like the zinnias and the dahlias and things like that, I will become much more familiar with these things and will have a little bit more knowledge. But at this point, I'm very much so in the learning stages um, but I can kind of look on here and see like, oh yeah, that one's actually way too, you know, immature and not ready to harvest. That one I probably let go a little bit past harvest. One of the things with zinnias is I've been super busy that I haven't been cutting these and selling these near as often as I would like. The downfall of that is a zinnia is a cut and come again variety. So the more you cut it, the more it'll produce. So, you know, ideally, I don't want these to go to seed. I want them to just continue to keep reproducing um, if I were to be cutting them to sell them. Um, and that is one of the benefits of growing a zinnia is that it is a cut and come again. You can plant the one flower and it'll just keep putting off those side shoots. And when you cut it, it'll keep doing that and keep doing that. And so that is a really nice thing. It's kind of like you're investing your time and your money in one flower that's gonna produce you so many flowers. And if you're like us and you've been dealing with this crazy hot weather, zinnias actually thrive and love the heat. So if you're in an area or a climate, you know, in your zone where you just get these really, really hot, brutal summers like we do here in Arkansas, zinnia is a pretty good one. All right, let's cut this bad boy. Since these are just for me in that small vase, I'm not actually gonna cut them. I'm gonna cut them right above where it starts to shoot out. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lower limbs. So I only keep like one set of leaves um, when I am harvesting these. All right, so this right here, I'll put my pruners up real quick. All right, so this right here, you guys see all those like folded uh, 
spots in the center of the flower. This right here is when it's kind of ideal. You want some of the outside to already have bloomed, but you want some of the inside leaves to still be curled up. So that is what my friends tell me who know how to grow zinnias. Um, when I have, you know, heart, oh, there's a little caterpillar on here. My goodness. Oh, you got to go. Ah. Um, so that is kind of, I guess, ideal harvest. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just strip the bottom foliage. I was mentioning too, certain flowers prefer to be harvested, you know, or cut harvested. I'm used to that vegetable talk. <laughs> Most flowers have a preference on if they wanna be cut in the morning or the evening because of cooler temperatures. Most flowers too, you know, if you're cutting them to sell, have a preference on if they need to immediately go into a cooler or they can stay on the counter. Now, obviously, if you're the home gardener and if you're using these for what I'm doing, I'm gonna just stick these in a vase, put them immediately on my table, it's no big deal. But if you're wanting to dabble into flowers because you're wanting to sell them and maybe, you know, sell them at the farmer's market or sell them to restaurants or you know whatever that may look like for you and what you're trying to accomplish there is some degree of like extra steps involved and so I know that I am growing some flowers that are going to require to be in a cooler and so when we move uh, Nathan and I are trying to figure out like a walk-in cooler situation and what that might look like but zinnias are one of those that actually don't want to be put in the cooler um, which is why I think it's also a really good flower if you're starting out and wanting to dabble into more cut flowers to sell them because when they're super easy they're cut and come again they love the flip in summer heat and then you don't have to have any additional cooler or storage situation uh, you can just leave them in buckets, you know, inside in your laundry room in a dark place or whatever. I've just actually enjoyed these so, so much. So here's some. I need to go ahead and put them in my vase and we'll harvest some more. I think I'm going to get one of those big sunflowers, so I'm not actually going to be picking a whole lot of the zinnias because my vase <laughs> isn't even really that big. Some of these cactus zinnias though are just breathtaking. They are by far some of my favorite. I mean, check that out. Isn't it just so pretty? And then yeah, look at all of those petals left. So that's awesome. If your zinnia is producing these side shoots as well, like when you go ahead and you cut them, that's totally fine. You can just cut them off. I typically don't try to strip the side shoots with my fingers. I'll just take the pruners and chop them off. But on the foliage, you can just oh, take your fingers and strip them. Y'all, check out all of these colors. Look at that. This is the Envy Zinnia, that green. I've been really impressed. There's so many different, it's kind of like an ombre of green. You guys can see how it gets darker and then it lightens up. These are pretty, and here is the candy cane or the peppermint stick right here. Oh yeah, that's exciting. I still think that the cactus zinnias are some of my favorite. I think they'll find a place in my garden uh, every single year. I'm actually really going to be happy too when we move because Jess has grown a lot of different varieties that I've never grown before. And so all the colors here with which I'll be saving the seeds from and taking some of these, she has totally different colors, bright, um, you know, vibrant pinks and yellows and greens and other things that like I just don't have. We've always, um, I think she has the queen's lime uh, in her garden. And so it's really cool because I'll be able to save the seeds from these, which will be cross and it'll just be kind of fun to see what we get. And then whatever she comes back up again will be different. And so it'll just be kind of cool to have a mixture of the two uh, in the garden, a little bit of her and a little bit of me, it'll be really sweet. You want a flower? Okay, hang on. There you go.
Thank you. <laughs> I'm actually gonna grab some of this eucalyptus real quick too. Look at that. So many flowers. <laughs> that is just so exciting. Okay. Look at this eucalyptus. It is crazy. All right, so I'm just gonna cut some of the bottom sprigs off. All right, so I don't really know anything about cutting eucalyptus, but these are just some of the side shoots that came off of mine that I have down here in these grow bags. And it looks really good. It smells flipping amazing. Wow, it smells so good. So I literally just cut these off the very, very bottom. I'm not really sure if that's what you're supposed to do or not. Um, but I mean, I don't think it's gonna hurt it really. Um, this is really fun. I like want to learn how to do a flower arrangement so bad. I just think it would be a school, a skill that would be beneficial to have, especially as I am like, you know, continuing to grow most of the flowers that I'm selling though. Um, like I don't have to worry about the arranging that that's, she does that. She just buys from a lot of different, um, farmers and then she actually makes the arrangements on her farm. Look at that. Look, we're getting there. So I'm not gonna trim these or anything because the sunflower, I'm gonna try to cut pretty tall. Uh, that way it's kind of the focal point. And then I've just got these little, you know, different varieties of zinnias around it. All right, mister, keep on walking. Look, we're getting all those clouds about to come in. See all that rain? Yes. I know, we need it. Aren't these so pretty? All right, down here, look, you grew those, babe. Stuck them in the ground. That's what it takes, you did it. <laughs> look at that one, I'm about to harvest one of those. I keep saying harvest because I'm so used to growing vegetables. I got it, I'm about to cut that one. Yeah, look at the bee on that one. I know, I wasn't gonna cut this one just because they were so, look, there's three bees. You see those little honey bees? Yeah. So there's the big bee, but then right over there are some honey bees. So Nathan had actually asked me if I had told you guys that we were gonna have to be buying squash and zucchini, and I have. That was uh, one of the last videos that you guys saw this week. Uh, we have been ripping out a lot of stuff. I actually have my friend Lauren at Berkeley Farms, who you guys have seen uh, quite a bit on here. She is actually killing it with, uh, she's growing in a tunnel this year, and her zucchini and cucumbers and tomatoes, everything is just literally looking so amazing. And so, one, I'm super happy for her, but then two, when I'm in a season where I'm just not doing this well, um, and I'm having a really hard time in the garden, it's really cool, because I'm just gonna buy it from her and support her in that. Um, so I am excited. It kind of was a win-win, and so I do encourage you guys, if something's not going right, source it out from somebody else who, who is or who is maybe just in an easier season of life than you. Um, check this sunflower. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Y'all, this storm is about to get serious, which I am so thankful because the rain has been so needed. My tomatoes need rain. My zinnias actually need rain, which is so funny. I didn't think we'd say that, huh, Nate? Because we had so much rain early on in the season. And now we're in a place where we haven't had rain in a while. Little bees, y'all better get busy for you gotta go hide. All right. I think this, yeah. So I can already tell just by the size of my vase that this is gonna be too, too big. Get off there, little guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of it off. Still a little too big. Now I do, I could be wrong, so if some of you guys know, please tell me. But I think, although zinnias is one of those that you do not have to store, and it actually prefers not to be stored in a cold place, I wanna say the eucalyptus is the opposite and prefers to be cooled. Um, don't hold me to that, uh, but right now too, it is looking very, very wilty. It is looking very, very not happy with me. And so I think that might actually be the case. Man, still gotta take some off. I gotta hurry up and finish this because the storm is a coming. Um, all right. 
look at that. So I picked one that's kind of floppy. You see how the top's kind of flopping here? I don't think that was probably a wise choice. I keep trying to cut it shorter, but ultimately it's just because the neck of it's like turned like that is why that's happening. But that's okay. Oh my goodness, babe, it feels amazing out here. <laughs> it's just so crazy to me how quickly that all happened. Well, you guys, I'm pretty sure the verdict is I am really bad at bouquet making. <laughs> this is not very glorious at all. I think the problem was picking a sunflower that was arched like this in its neck because now it's not like setting up right versus if it was up like this and not tilted down. Um, so this one was probably a little too mature, um, but that's okay. There we go. It's not near as bad. Okay, well, the storm is happening and coming this way, so Nathan and I are gonna get inside. Again, thank you guys so much for your sweet prayers. I will keep you guys updated. Thanks for hanging out with me in the garden. As I picked my first little arrangement, I obviously have a lot to learn. <laughs> And I obviously have a lot more to figure out, but it is really fun to just kind of be on this journey of learning something new, sharing it with you guys as I'm learning. And the fun thing about flowers is, I can mess up, right? This may not be what a bouquet is supposed to look like, but I can still look at this and I can remember when I started these in my greenhouse. I can remember when I transplanted them out. I can remember how I walk out here every day and find so much joy and this little misfit, not perfectly arranged uh, little vase right here. It's just gonna remind me of all the joy, when, which is why I just planted these flowers to begin with. So it doesn't have to be perfect, you just have to enjoy doing it. Uh, but thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to you soon.